What's our count? Two minutes, less than a minute. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me uh, We're on, everybody. I want to call this special and extraordinary budget meeting of the Durham City Council to order at 1 p.m. on April the 24th, 2020. Uh, we have, as I understand our agenda, really just two agenda items. We have the discussion of the budget presentation um, that will be led by our budget department and then a, a discussion of our budget guidelines. We're glad to see everybody. Uh, and again, as always, thanks to our staff for helping us make this uh, online uh, meeting work. Thank you so much. And uh, now I will turn it over to the city manager uh, for his leadership. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Good afternoon again, uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, we do appreciate uh, you taking the time on a Friday afternoon. I know we've all had a very, very busy week, uh, but uh, we need to uh, spend some time this Friday afternoon talking about uh, kind of the, the budget and where things stand. As I have said to uh, each of you when I've had a chance to talk uh, individually, uh, certainly not unlike uh, the rest of our community and so many uh, people in, in uh, the world, so to speak, um, our um, our world has it changed around uh, around the budget. The last time we had a meeting with you uh, to talk about the budget, I think was maybe early March. And uh, at that time and prior to that time, we were fairly close to uh, uh, bringing in a, a balanced budget uh, kind of across the board in many areas, uh, looking forward to uh, a number of new initiatives that people had ideas about that were uh, going to uh, advance either our strategic or our aspirational goals for so many things in the community. And uh, certainly the last 60 days, things have changed dramatically. Uh, as you'll see uh, shortly when uh, the budget director uh, talks about the, uh, the, uh, the financial positions and projections, uh, we've gone from almost a balanced budget to, uh, to about a $12.5 million gap in the general fund alone. Uh, but we want to spend some time uh, this afternoon with the council kind of giving you an update of our uh, best uh, projections and, and best estimates about where things uh, stand both in terms of uh, the current year but also uh, as it relates to uh, to the obviously the budget that we will be uh, bringing to you uh, later in may and that you'll be considering in in june uh, obviously, the impacts of, uh, of COVID-19 uh, are, are continuing to evolve uh, in many, many ways, but as it relates to the budget, there are so many uh, aspects of, of both our revenue projections uh, as well as our uh, anticipated uh, expenditure needs that uh, we just don't know. We, we are using our best judgment to try to uh, establish uh, the baseline revenues and think about where we have placeholders for either known or unexpected expenditures. Uh, but we know that uh, unlike any budget really that we have presented to the council in my tenure, uh, but probably councils have considered uh, this, this budget while, while it will be adopted in a fashion in June, it will be uh, evolving throughout the year as we learn more every month about uh, things that uh, either don't go the way we had anticipated as it relates to revenues, or uh, probably more significantly, 
things we learn new about priority expenditures that, uh, that we will have to adapt to. Hopefully the financial position that the city has been in that we've worked long and hard to establish will give us lots of flexibility for pivots uh, and we won't have to make uh, the very, very difficult decisions that I know a number of other communities across the country and in some cases North Carolina are having to make related to uh, either service reductions or uh, uh, employee layoffs and those kinds of things. Uh, but again, uh, you know, things that we don't know now uh, are probably some, somewhat the scariest for me to think about uh, uh, difficult, more difficult decisions than we'll already have to make. But I wanted to, you know, let, let us walk through uh, where we are today. Uh, hopefully this will be an opportunity for uh, certainly some candid conversations, but also maybe even some initial uh, decisions as we uh, talk through the, uh, um, the budget guidelines, which has been our guiding document. Uh, we are, uh, are very uh, mo moving into a fairly short time frame. Uh, that we will have some very intense staff work over the next couple of weeks after today to, uh, to put together the final budget and be in a position to uh, present that to you and to the community uh, on the, uh, the 18th of, uh, of May. So with that, let me turn it over to, uh, to Bertha and she will take the presentation. Bertha is in City Hall right now at the dais and uh, uh, we very much appreciate her and the budget staff who have really had to, uh, to pivot in so many ways to uh, help us think about the, the new impacts uh, and the changes in this budget. Uh, it's almost like doing it twice, but they've done a remarkable job. And hopefully after today, you'll see the, uh, the kind of thinking and thoughtfulness that they've already brought to, uh, to this discussion. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager and welcome Bertha. Good we appreciate you. We know what a burden it's been over the last month since all this is turned upside down. So thanks to the manager and thanks to you, Bertha. And we look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Um, at this point, I am going to share my screen with you so that everyone else can see the presentation that I sent to you uh, yesterday. Oops. So really what we want to uh, share today is we want to give you an update on our budget um, financial projections. The last time we shared those numbers were with you were at our retreat um, in February on the 14th. We also want to share our proposed uh, changes to the budget development guidelines and talk about any other budget matters that we need to discuss today. So looking at our general fund revenues, um, we, are looking at reducing our property tax revenue by 1%. And that is because we are reducing the, the proposed uh, collection rate based on information we receive from the county, as well as looking at the numbers, um, particularly around um, auto, auto sales, auto property tax and sales tax. So um, we're reducing that by 1% and that will be a reduction of 1.1 million in revenues. Sales tax projection, and I'll share a little bit more about those numbers on the next slide. Um, we are looking at a 10% uh, reduction in revenue, which I shared with you the last time we spoke, which is $7.2 million, and occupancy tax 9% reduction, which is $297,000. So looking at property tax, um, just as a reminder, when we reduce the property tax revenue, it impacts other funds as well. And so you can see here what the original adopted uh, amount was for 1920 what the 2021 original budget was, which is what we share with you in February and what our revised numbers are. And that is caused by us decreasing our collection rate from 99.6% from 99% to 99.6%. That is consistent with what the county has done as well. And we are also keeping the vehicle tax portion flat compared to FY 1920. Bertha, sure. can we interrupt you with questions or would you prefer us to Absolutely. wait to the end? Okay, can you talk a little bit about um, what, like what the um, evidence you're using to guide these projections in terms of um, how much sales tax we're going to lose, how much occupancy tax we're going to lose? Like, are you looking at, um, are you looking at 
ideas about you know how long stay at home orders are going to stay in place or uh, like like what what's built into that prediction. That's a great question. Uh, with all of these projections, we've had multiple sources. Uh, we have our Pier City groups, groups that are in Pier City geographically, uh, Raleigh, Greensboro, um, Durham County, our other uh, cities in the area. So we've had multiple calls and, and conversations with them. But more importantly, each year we get uh, projections from the NCLM um, and they we use those numbers because their economists build, build those numbers and we use those projections. Um, every year in, in our projections and adjust accordingly. We also have had uh, conversations with others like Dr. Walden has had sessions and we look at um, all of those sources and all of those sources have been pretty much the same uh, projections. For a sales tax example, the 10% number that we use is also the same number that Dr. Walden gave us, the same number that the league used, the same number. Um, and I'll show you another slide um, that most of our cities are using. And it's in the middle of the highest and, and the most conservative and the most progressive. And so I'll share some more details, but those are the sources that we're using. And to the manager's point, we don't know. Uh, we are looking at this you know, daily as we look at our numbers, as we continue to participate in uh, multiple uh, calls with um, other organizations, as well as uh, some of our state agencies. Thank you. Do you know if any of those economists or um, folks at those agencies are consulting with health, like are they consulting with healthcare experts about the ideas around the, you know, the way the virus is going to change over the next year? I feel like there are a lot of different ideas about that and I find it, I'm just, I'm kind of wondering like which one are we using? Is this like a best case scenario? Is this a mid case scenario in terms of how long it takes things to go back to reasonably normal, you know, there, there are some healthcare experts who think there's going to be another um, pretty, and there's going to be a need for another pretty intense wave of social distancing in the fall. Like, are we compensating for that in our projections? So um, one of the things uh, that is exactly what Dr. Walden said, he said the expectation is we'll be dealing with this in, a, in the fall. And so he has taken that under consideration um, in his projections, but he also says that they continue to update their projections and, and get additional information. Uh, we, I have some information I can share with you that we received from, from the league as, and they also um, work with others as well. And so I can share with you, I can't tell you specifically how they incorporated that data, um, that information into their projections, but I know they are considering it. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. So here's an example of what I was uh, referring to when you asked that question is, you know, there are multiple scenarios you can look at. You can look at the most conservative, uh, you can look at the severe, and you can look at the moderate. Uh, most of our cities uh, are in this area uh, choosing the moderate, which is the 10% for sales tax, which is the number that we also received from Dr. Walden. And so we are looking at multiple scenarios, as we always do when we share with you all multi-year uh, fund projections, we'll, we'll, we talk about, you know, the different projection levels, whether it's, um, you know, conservative, whether it's uh, an aggressive um, um, projection based on what we see, what we're currently seeing in the economy. And so you can choose either any of these numbers, um, but most of us are, are in the severe, severe in the 10% with sales tax. And, you know, some may wonder why we're so consumed with sales tax. You all know that because it's such a significant revenue source to the general fund and it's so volatile when, as, it, um, as it relates to the economy. And so that is one that we do often put a lot of uh, emphasis on when we're talking about the general fund budget in particular. I, can, I, can I be the person in the room to interrupt just briefly and say, I think maybe we should take attendance. Yes, we may take attendance. Thank you. Just I want to make sure everybody's here and can hear us. And yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Thank you. Good Madam, Clerk, Madam Clerk, would you help us do that? Absolutely. Mayor Shul. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Councilmember Caballero. Councilmember Caballero is having a connection issue. She's trying to call in. Councilmember Freeman. Present. Thank you. And Councilmember Middleton? Here. Councilmember Reese? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Reese. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Go ahead, Bertha. Thank you. 
So as we look at our other revenues, we also typically get these project projections from the North Carolina League. So we have implemented those projections in our um, updated numbers as well. Uh, some of those are not as significant as others. Um, as the, I mentioned about the power bill, which is a gas tax the other week, we do, no, do not have an updated projection on those that revenue source as of yet. And we've also made some projections. You can see the only program revenues that we have uh, projected a decline in is uh, Durham Parks and Recreation. So to the manager's point, when we saw this multi-year financial uh, plan for the general fund in February, the number was, uh, we had a deficit of 750,000 and that number is 11 point, almost 11.8 million now. Um, you, there's, when you look out at future years, those numbers would change as we make uh, recommendations and as we implement uh, new changes to the multi-year financial plan based on decisions that are made by council when the budget is adopted. Also, I wanna point out here, um, and we'll talk about this when we get to the budget guidelines, if you were to take this multi-year uh, financial plan for the general fund and compare it to what you saw in February, you'll also see some changes on the revenue side and expenditure side because we have made some changes in terms of pulling out the 4 million additional that we had uh, suggested taken from fund balance for street maintenance. So you can see that number drop from five point, almost 5.9 to zero. We also had some additional revenues in there from fund balance for other reasons. And so we've uh, also taken out the expenditure side of that as well. And we can, we'll talk about that in detail uh, next when I go to the multi-year, when I go to the um, budget development guidelines. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to take those changes that you just saw in terms of revenues and incorporate those in some other language um, related to what we feel like we need to change in the guidelines that send the message of the priorities of the organization. So what I've done is, and in the version you can see is I've made changes. I have um, changed the font color to red for those changes as well as to strike through um, items in the budget development guidelines. So we started with um, the first uh, overall, we wanted to make sure that um, it is clear that we prioritize funding related to COVID-19 um, in our budget development process. There is a request that everyone mute. If they're not talking, this Vivian is still getting some uh, feedback. So in the under revenues, um, you can see in the red here, we have the comments around um, our, our plan, uh, our strategy uh, commitments and initiatives. And, but we also need to consider uh, potential revenue losses and the revenues. The first bullet related to the tax rate, we struck out unless the council determines that a tax rate increase above this amount as necessary to fund budget requests for important needs that cannot be otherwise funded. That means we would not recommend a tax rate increase for the general fund. When we look at fund balance, uh, we initially um, had the fund balance at the 16.7%. We would recommend that we not let it fall below 12%, which was our policy before we changed the policy to be 16.7%. A new item. I'm sorry, that 12%, that's the level that's required by the state. Is that correct? That is a number that was in previous policy, policies, and yet is, that is the number that's recommended by the state. But not required by the state. Just I think the state requirement is something like 8%. Eight, 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 the requirement is 8%. Okay, okay. That's Thank correct, you. Mr. Mayor. It's an 8% requirement at the state uh, level. Thank you. Another comment on the fund balance is um, we added this item. Fund balance may be considered to cover projected revenue losses. We did not make any changes to the debt service fund or the solid waste fund for the tax rate portion. 
The rate for the dedicated housing fund, uh, we struck out an increase of 1.5 cents to cover debt for the affordable housing bond, which, mean we would, which means we would not have an overall tax rate increase. So I don't know if we want to talk about that now or later, Mr. Mayor, maybe we go through all these and we'll come back to some of these points. Yeah, I think it would be good to go through everything and we're all, uh, uh, and then we'll, I know we, I have some questions from what has been previously said. I'm sure others do too. So why don't we go ahead and. Thank you. Yeah. The next change is that we, um, we added to the statement around the bid that a reduction in tax rate for the bid will be considered. The current rate is seven cents. And we have a slide in the presentation that will give you the scenarios from five to seven cents. Can I ask if that's a revenue, if that's revenue related? Yes, that's the tax rate side of it. So that would reduce our revenue? That would reduce the revenue to the bid. And, and specifically, um, the bid property owners, are these people of color? Um, it depends. Yeah, they're the downtown businesses in the bid district. It's just the businesses in the bid district. It's the property owners in the bid district. Right. Okay. So it sounds like a tax cut for property owners downtown is what you can, what, what, what this sounds like. Yes, it is saying that we will consider a tax rate reduction unless you all um, want to restore it back to the original, which would, it would remain at seven cents. These are- I think we'll, we'll talk some more about that when we get there. We have a slide on this. So the next item is the water rate increase. Um, the number was originally 4% and now we have will not exceed 3%. So those are the revenue items. Do you want to discuss those before we go to expenditures? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and discuss the revenue items. I think that sounds good. Um, let me ask first. Uh, Bertha covered a lot in her original presentation on the um, on the budget. And does anyone have any questions about that presentation before we get to the guidelines? Anybody have any questions about that? I so, just wanted I just wanted to ahead. to just ask a clarifying question. These um, revenue areas these are the only revenue areas that we have that we're looking at right now. No, these are the revenue areas that we normally bring to you as part of the budget development guidelines. Okay. So this is just taking those guidelines. Normally, we would be bringing them back to you now for you to adopt them. Since um, the change in our projections and revenues, we need to update this version and get you to adopt a different version because we had to make changes to revenues and we wanted to make sure that there were some other um, recommendations on the expenditure side as well. We have other revenues, but there, these, are, these are the revenue, uh, these are the guidelines we typically bring to council for adoption because they're the major revenue sources. And we also need guidance from council as it relates to the tax rate. And so we usually break, we break out all of the tax rate components in the guidelines. So just one question regarding the one revenue source that you did mention. Um, I noticed that the, I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go back through the slides. The revenue for hotels and occupancy, it looks like you decreased it by 3%. Is that just for the quarter or is that for 21? That's for 21. Okay. That seems a little conservative, like really conservative, but, uh, but okay. Yeah, um, I, I think that's a great question. That, that looks awfully optimistic. Yeah, really. Do we, uh, those, those projections come from DCVB or um, how, where do we? We did get, we did reach out to DCVB and I was trying to go back to my notes to see what, um, if we got a number from them. I'll, I'll let staff look at that and we can come back to that. All right. Let me just say that the, the PAL bill uh, also is, I mean, aren't we certain that gas tax revenues will be decreased? 
Well, we're not certain. The league is has not put out a projection because it's the majority of it is based on population um, and street miles, which doesn't change. Although the entire uh, availability of funds may change. So we, it's flat at this point. At some point, I'm sure we will get a projection uh, from them. We just don't have a number at all now. Um, and because we have received our entire um, payment for this year, we haven't been, we don't have any way to project what the number is next year. And none of our other uh, cities in our group has changed their number yet. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean that at some point we will not adjust that. Okay. Yeah, those numbers, those two numbers both look optimistic, but uh, thank you. Uh, Council Member Caballero. I was just gonna ask if Discover Durham had given us the number, but it Bertha's gonna follow up. Thank you. Uh, other questions about these, uh, the, the first presentation at this time? Just to, just to also, just a nod, um, I want to, similar to council member, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson's comment, it would be good to see a good, better, best, or from good to worse on these, because it feels, it feels like a dream, honestly. Like this would be phenomenal if the gap is only 12.5 million. I think um, hopefully we'll be able to get closer to reality as time goes by. Um, and we'll, we'll see how optimistic these are or how pessimistic these are. Um, yeah. Um, on the multi-year plan chart, uh, the, the sales tax uh, the other local taxes line looks like we're projecting about two and let's see about two and a half million dollars less in sales tax than we had in 2020. Does that seem about right, Bertha? Where we we collect with well, this year we're getting about 72 million. Next year the revised projection is about say 69.7, so 2.3 million dollar difference. Yes. Okay, so our projections were quite a bit higher. We were, yeah, okay. And the, um, the multi-year assumptions, and just looking at the bottom line, that's your $12 million gap there for 2021. And Explain a little bit more about the gaps that we see in the following years. Um, assuming that we, what are the assumptions that have changed? I, I guess, let me, let me ask it this way. I can't remember what the gaps look like on the original projection for those years. I believe we had some negative numbers. My recollection is into the future years that we were gonna have to fill gaps also. Uh, and I'm wondering how this compares to that. I don't have those in front of me from uh, the previous budget presentation. I do not have that in front of me either, but I would say that um, when you look at the next year, the next year, per, we have not changed our assumptions for 2022, meaning that whatever assumptions we had when we, when you, uh, when we presented this to you in February, we haven't changed the assumptions for future years. So those revenue assumptions, the 3% the gross in the sales tax, the 99% uh, collection rate, all of those are still in. So that's why I said earlier is you really can't look at the future years because we haven't changed those projections. And you also don't see any contribution contribution from 21 to 22 um, for uh, revenues on, on the multi-year. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Mayor. This is John, John Allure, Assistant Budget Director. Hey, John. Hi, I just wanted to chime in on a couple of things there. One with the multi-year because there's such volatility, uh, particularly in, in, in what we know now and where we're going in the next 18 months, it really requires some decisions for those 18 months before we can really see what the role factor is in the out years. So a lot of that would pivot and, and change. 
The second thing I wanted to do address was occupancy tax since it was brought up. Um, when we presented this, the best we had was 3%. We, uh, since presenting this, uh, got did hear back from um, Discover Durham, and they were looking more at 30%. So that would increase our by their projections. However, I had not dealt, there's some new staff over there, and I had not dealt with them. Um, but that would increase the gap by about $800,000. Just keep in mind that we, we do look a lot at the monitor, monitor occupancy tax, because obviously it's very important to us. Um, it's a major revenue, revenue, but not to the extent that sales tax and property tax is. Thank you, John, that's very helpful. Any other questions uh, before we go back to the budget guidelines on any of the previous charts? Oh, no. My question is for the, in the budget guidelines. Okay, well, let's go to the budget guidelines then and Council Member Caballero, please. Um, seeing the, you know, we talked about what we would add potentially because of the um, affordable housing bond and seeing that it's been struck. And I just think that that's, that's right. I agree with that and just wanted to share my opinion. I know it will, we'll have to then make different decisions in the future, but for where we are right now, I think that that's absolutely right. Another factor that will come into play with that is ultimately, if we do have a reduction in property tax collections or values, uh, we'll have to update the uh, projected tax rate increases that will be required to uh, to support the debt service. Uh, so that'll be something we'll have to watch, and we know we'll have to continue to uh, to recalculate once we see for sure how those uh, tax what the tax values come in with. Uh, why don't we do this, uh, Bertha, like what we usually do with these uh, guidelines is we kind of take them one by one. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that. How does, how, and let's look at the revenue guideline just to make sure everybody gets to be heard on those. Um, Mr. Mayor, we, could, I, could I suggest we go through the entire uh, budget guideline and come back to that? Because I think some of the expenditure side discussions may impact uh, how we think about the revenue side piece as well and vice versa sure let's do that thank you thank you so yes i would suggest that if you have questions on the revenue side clarifying questions we can talk about those now but then wait to the end to make the final decisions so the first item um, on the expenditure side is pay and there is a, a lot of red um, that we have strike through. Um, but really, it, it really uh, boils down to the first new item, which is as we move through the budget development process and fiscal year, pay adjustments for full-time and part-time employees will be considered. Where in the previous version and other versions, we, we are very specific about uh, each of the pay uh, plans and how we would, what recommendations we make before those pay plans. We don't feel at this point we're at a place that we can make those decisions or recommendations. But the, are our retirement contributions in any way um, governed by state law? They are totally. And how? The, the retirement, the last bullet, is that the one you're referring to? This? Sorry, can y'all hear Bertha? I can't hear her anymore. Yes, I can hear Bertha. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? I think you're on mute. Yes. Sorry, I hear you now. Something's wrong with my headset. Okay. And now it shows you on mute again. Do you still have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the How are our retirement contributions governed by state law? I missed the answer if you already answered it. Are you referring to those at the bottom in the bullet that I'm highlighting? Because those are totally controlled by the state. Okay, so the supplemental retirement, that's at the discretion of the city. That is correct, this one, which we, which is the net, only other guideline related to compensation is that we would consider a reduction of the 5% city contribution. Okay, thank you. So the guidelines related, related to the dedicated street resurfacing fund, uh, we originally had $6 million. 
Dorothy, excuse me one second. I want to make sure that uh, we were clear the when we look at the financial projections that you know the the the, the model currently that model still has those pay increases in there, correct? They have the pay increases in there, except for um, a reduction of general for um, one half year, which is, right. I believe, honest. Yeah, that's the only reduction. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So the street resurfacing fund, again, we already talked about this one, but the original amount was 6 million and we have been adding an additional 4 million for fund balance. Um, obviously we feel like there may be higher, higher need for those resources. So we will just um, maintain the fund at the 6 million funding level. This, the maintenance uh, replacement project will remain at 1 million. We've added 100,000 to that fund each year we feel like this is a year that we want to use those resources, may need those resources for uh, other needs. We did not change the free fleet replacement funding. We also just struck out new funding priority to our uh, strategic plan and we added um, an item. The first item is funds will be held in reserve up to 5 million for future COVID-19 response and that programs may be considered for downsizing or discontinuation. Can you talk a little bit more about the 5 million for COVID response? I'll, I'll have Tom talk about that. Sure. So th this is one of those areas that uh, quite frankly, you know, we, we just don't know, but my instincts are that there are going to be a variety of emerging issues some of them may be operational and some of them uh, may be programmatic, uh, you know, community response kinds of things that we will be facing depending on the, uh, the length of time that uh, um, obviously we are, we are in, a, in a significant impact mode. And rather than try to um, either guess individual items and put a number on them uh, or uh, respond to, uh, you know, a, a, a a current uh, request or urgency that someone in the community or the council thinks we we should respond to. I thought it would be important for us to, for now, for budgetary purposes, just set aside uh, an amount of money, and this is clearly an arbitrary amount of money, but set aside, uh, try, try to figure, think about how we would set up some COVID response reserve that uh, once we had better handle or grasp on, on certain aspects of uh, either operational requirements or community response requirements that um, we hadn't balanced the budget without thinking about that. I don't know if that answers your question, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, and is the idea that that would come from the general fund fund balance? E or, or some combination, yes. Uh, you okay. know, that we would be setting that aside as a part of the budget, obviously, if we didn't need it, or uh, uh, you know, th th then that money could go back into the general fund. But that we would go ahead and set aside some some aspect of that uh, that we we have we we know it is available. Um, you know, I would be really concerned if we start talking about dropping the. the you know, we can come back to it, but the, the fund balance below the twelve percent, because I think there's a lot of other ripple impacts to that. But I do think that uh, before we embark on Spending, spending any of that excess or that extra uh, fund balance on things that we not forget to set aside some, some money for unknown, I call them at this point, uh, COVID response needs. Mm -hmm. Does this budget take into account any of the federal funding that we anticipate receiving, the additional home and CDPG money or the transit money? Uh, those are gonna be in different funds, not the general fund. Okay, so they wouldn't they wouldn't be a part of this five million. Correct. Would be separate. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Bertha. Do, anything else you want to say about the guidelines, or should we go back to the top and start discussing them? We can go back to the top and start discussing them, and if you have other questions, I can move around if you need to. Thank you. Okay. Um, Colleagues, um, let's start with the first uh, red 
sentence. However, funding needs related to COVID-19 may take precedence. Any questions or comments about that? Mr. Mayor, if I might. Council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone, and to my colleagues and everyone watching. I, um, I think that is the appropriate um, tone setting statement. And I think that's the way, um, I think that it, it strikes the proper um, tone for us to, to conduct our discussion about the, um, the budget uh, moving forward. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about nailing down what the, what the deficit or what the, the um, gap is going to be. And, you know, it's part science, it's, it's part art. I was on a call with the North Carolina League of Municipalities uh, Board of Directors yesterday talking about uh, how to, to, to project uh, what the gaps are going to be. And, and I think a, a prevailing sentiment was, you know, plan to govern for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, it's much easier to come down off of austerity than try and course correct upward um, as you get real time data. So I, I, you know, just just at the beginning, that's how I'm going to be governing myself in this conversation. I'm assuming the worst, uh, preparing for it. There are some red lines I think that we should have in terms of what is absolutely vital and critical for us as a city to maintain. Obviously, employment uh, benefits for our, our staff, um, but but I'm assuming the worst in terms of the projection. Um, and uh, hoping for the best. So I want to thank the staff for the work uh, that they've done. And, and I, I think that's a wholly appropriate uh, statement. Uh, funding needs related to COVID-19 may take precedence. I think that's appropriate. That's how we should govern ourselves. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Any more comments about that sentence? I think we're all in accord. So appreciate your comments and thank you, Bertha. Let's move now to um, the second red set, uh, phrase, um, which is, uh, go back up, Bertha. Yeah, there we go. The FY 2021 budget must support the city's strategic plan in identifying funding to enhance priority programs and services while considering potential revenue losses. Everybody good with that? I'm seeing some thumbs, thank you. Uh, the tax rate for the general fund rule. This this is this one's very important. Uh, this is a big one. Um, so let's give this some careful consideration. The tax rate for the general fund will remain at the current rate of thirty point eight cents per hundred dollar assessed value, and we had added very consciously uh, that we would be considering tax increases uh, above this amount for important needs that could not otherwise be funded. So the administration is now recommending that we not have that tax increase. Um, and uh, I will uh, welcome any comments that folks may have about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that that's absolutely necessary for the economic moment that we are in right now. We've got um, a really severe crisis and there's, you know, our important needs that cannot otherwise be funded are just not going to be funded right now. Um, that's the reality of the situation that we're in. That's the reality of the situation that our residents are in. Um, I think a tax increase this year would be, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just not, it's just not appropriate and we got to move forward with what we got. I will add my agreement to that. Um, there's a lot we want to do, but we're in a, we're in a, we're in a, a crisis moment. Uh, and I think this is the right recommendation. Other comments on this? I'm, I'm having, I don't see everybody on my screen, so speak up if I don't call on you, okay? Councilmember Middleton? No, no, I, I was not, I, I don't see everyone as well. I think with the screen, when we're in screen sharing mode, we still see the documents, so I don't have the benefit of seeing everyone as well. So we'll, we'll use our voices to pipe up. Charlie yeah. is waving. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman, for uh, witnessing my my plea for attention. Um, I just because this is such an important statement, I don't want to let simple silence equal consent here. But I will say that uh, that I think this is exactly right and exactly where we are. Um, we're going to have to be very honest with our friends um, over the next several weeks about the situation we find ourselves in. And I think we're going to have to be very direct and clear with folks about how important it is for us to maintain essential city services uh, in the upcoming budget. And I think what people also need to understand is that, that these 
forecasts, as we've heard today, are preliminary, can change as we go deeper into, as we get into the next fiscal year. We don't know what's going to happen, if there's going to be a relaxing of our stay-at-home orders so that our economy can get a little bit back to, to business and then need to be restricted again if as we hit an additional wave of the virus uh, later this year. And so I think those, those factors all um, uh, demand the very cautionary um, and the very careful approach that uh, these guidelines set forward. And I just wanna, as everyone else has so far, thank staff uh, for being, for putting in all the work to get us to where we are today. Um, I believe the city manager or you, Mr. Mayor, I can't remember, said it's almost like having done it twice. I think it's exactly like having done it twice uh, because they got very far uh, during the first week in March uh, toward what was going to be a really good budget with a lot of great uh, new things in it. Now they had to, they've had to retool uh, nearly every aspect of the budget to get us to where we are now. Um, and all, as I said, this sentence and the revision here is really important for us as we go forward as policymakers into the budget vote that we'll have in June, but also uh, to make sure that we are all in the community, um, obviously uh, using appropriate social distancing, uh, that we're in the community and talking to our neighbors, our friends, um, and uh, city residents about why this is important and about how we all have things we want to do in the upcoming budget, and we're all gonna be disappointed. But the critical issue is we have to preserve essential city services. I think that removing that language from the budget guidelines helps give us room to try to do that, um, even under a number of the worst case scenarios. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilmember Reese. Councilmember Freeman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also um, like to add that I appreciate the staff's recommendation to stay at where we're at. I uh, would likely be encouraging us to look at lower, but um, recognizing that uh, right now is the time for panic. So I'll just hold on on any of that push. But I, I do know that folks are reeling right now based on their own personal finances and job loss and what have you. And I'm really concerned about how property owners will manage um, even at the current rate, considering that there's been quite a bit of, of property tax increases in the last um, two years. So I just wanna make sure that um, I do note that I appreciate where we are, but I would like to push for more. Thank you very much. Any other uh, comments on this one? Okay. I'm going to then uh, just say that we have uh, consensus. Uh, we don't traditionally vote on these things, uh, the, the individual items in the guidelines at this point. And Bertha, you will at some point bring the guidelines back to us for a vote. Is that correct? That's correct. But I'm hearing broad consensus uh, on this very important decision. So thank you very much, Bertha. Uh, and I think we'll now next, the next thing we have is a new item. Fund balance may be considered to, oh no, I'm sorry. Fund balance in the general fund will not be projected to fall below 12%. Uh, this is the number that we had in for many years. In the last few years, we used 16.7%, uh, but we have always uh, known that uh, should a uh, emergency, one of the reasons we had that 16.7% was to keep a safety margin should a genuine emergency occur. Uh, and so uh, I'll just say that I endorse this and uh, am happy to hear uh, other comments from members of the council. Councilmember Freeman and then Councilmember Mays. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I also concur with this uh, projected or the recommendation. The uh, only reason, only thing I wanted to denote is that if there was not a move to push for funding in emergency cases for COVID-19 in the amount of $5 million, I would not be supportive of that 16.7% going down to 12. But noting that we will have unexpected expenses and having um, those funds available make me more comfortable with that going down to 12%. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, uh, uh, I think I call on Council Member Reese next and then Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is th the general fund is often somewhat erroneously and simplistically called the rainy day fund for cities. Um, however, I, I think it's raining. Um, and I think dialing back our expectation on um, on how much of fund balance we retain is exactly the right thing to do right now. That's what it's there for. That's why we keep it. Um, and it's a testament to how well run the city has been for the last decade that we are in the situation we're in with the fund balance. And so, um, you know, we've all had moments uh, over the last number of years where we've had things we wanted to do and uh, wanted to spend fund balance on. I think for the most part, uh, we've been responsible about that. And today is a day to uh, to be glad about that and to uh, agree that I think 12% is the right number for where we are. It won't always be the right number, um, but I think uh, it's the right number for this upcoming cycle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Uh, could we hear a little bit more from Tom about what other consequences there are to going down beyond past 12 percent down to that state minimum of eight? Um, I don't think that that's necessary now, but if you know as as the rain increases, um, if we need to pull uh, additional sources of revenue to to manage operations, what would be the impact of going down to the state um, le minimum level? Well, um, you know, there, there are a number of, of factors, uh, and I was going to comment even about going down to the 12% uh, of factor. Um, certainly, you know, the biggest impact is going, would be, you know, how it played out on our bond rating. 12% uh, is, is typically, a, you know, fairly standard place, uh, place for us to, uh, to be. Um, so that would be, that would be one. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, uh, too, is that, you know, how we use fund balance is something that we usually are very protective of. Uh, typically, we you know say fund balance will be used for one-time expenses, so that we don't you know spend spend money that we need to, that we think we'll need every year, but we only have it once. This is this is a fairly exceptional time, obviously, as Councilmember Reese said. Um, so I think that you know it, it, you know to the extent that you know we. We accept the uh, the projections for future years as a some somewhat return to normal. Uh, then I have less concern about that. Uh, I also think that we will, um, as a part of either the budget or or subsequent to the budget, want to think about how we build in a rebuilding or a, a, you know reinstituting these balances in the future in future budgets. So we don't just say, okay, we're going to start living with 12%, 12 percent from now on. You know, we would want to uh, think about, you know, building in future increases back to to those, you know, those stable points for the the next time that we uh, we would need them. Uh, Bertha, do you happen to have the numbers, like the absolute dollar amounts we're talking about, in any of these contexts? We we had a slide previously, but I don't know if we have that today. So um, yes, uh, looking at 12 percent. Um, the number, the minimum level would be 24 million and at 16.7, it'll be 34 million. So our surplus for 16.7 is 10.6 million. But if we, if the number is 12%, then we'd have 20.3 million. Okay, so, so the, the difference between 12 and 16 is what? So the, the, it was, it's 10 million. Around 10 million, okay. I'm just, I was just trying to put some dollar context into percentages. Thank you. And, and Tom, just a caveat to that is, that is based on us meeting our projections for the current fiscal year. Right. Which still can be a challenge. Be so a challenge. When we did our quarterly report, we project what we th where we think our revenue is gonna come in and our expenditures, but we may have more expenditures than we anticipated this current fiscal year. And we, almost, we also may suffer, of course, in some of our department program revenues, less revenues. So that number is not a, a, a not, not a good number at this time. We'll need to recalculate that, that calculate that, of course, at the end of the fiscal year. Thank you. So, Bartha, as I understand it, then the the um, it's the the the, the amount between the twelve percent and the sixteen point seven is ten million dollars or less, and the yes. less would be 
it's less by the amount that our program revenues are declining in this fiscal year, or we may have some other extra expenses in this. this yes, year. and then it's calculated based on what the actual budget is. And so it will depend on what our, our budget is because it's, it's a percentage. So we will have a closer, uh, we'll have a number, obviously by the time we get closer to the manager's budget, we will continue monthly to, to but we are starting, of course, we have some revenue uh, shortfalls already in our departments, as well as some of our ever, other revenues slowing down. Um, we still get, you know, occupancy tax and other revenues in the current fiscal year that we had, normally we come in within 1% of our projections. And so that may not happen this year. Right, so there's the revenue challenge. There's also, I guess some of the, the, um, the fee challenges are in, I mean, there's the property tax collection challenge, but there's also the, um, I, I guess, there, for example, parks and, recs is, parks and Rec is in the general fund. That's uh, correct. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I'm, I, I think you may have had another question or two. Nope, I'm good, thank you. You're good? Okay. Uh, Council Member Freeman? I think um, I just wanted to ask quickly if the tax revenue shift or the tax date shift is going to have an impact on which quarter that's going to come in. Does that, does that have any impact on where we'll stand at the end at June 30th? Are you, are you referring to income tax? Yeah, yes. No. So when the property tax does actually hit, um, I guess the city because it's coming from the state to the to the county, how does does that no. any any of that timing matter? Are you, are you speaking of property tax or sales tax? Both. So property tax comes from the county to us; they collect for us, and the majority of that revenue is collected in January. Most people pay it by the end of the year, so we have very little coming in after after January. The sales tax revenue comes from the state, and so we get those that revenue on a monthly basis. Okay, thank you. And I think um, Councilman Caballero had a question. For yeah, me. let me let me go, come back to that too, Councilman Freeman. I think that uh, you know one of the one of the things that we we have experienced before during the recession in two thousand eight, uh, and that I expect we will experience now for a couple of reasons is probably some delays in those uh, receipts of those sales tax collections. That's what I was getting at. I think the state is likely to extend, you know, timeframes that businesses and have to submit their sales tax. But also we have seen many times that the state for their own cash flow uh, requirements have, have uh, been a little bit slow to uh, push. So we are, we are continually challenged when that occurs because, you know, we'll, we'll receive a payment uh, for a month, but we're not always sure if that's 100% of the payment that we should have received or some subset of that. And so as we make projections, we're always trying to think through, you know, is that a complete collection or not? And then remember that we have a three or four, is it four month delay birth or a three month three delay? Month delay? A three month lag uh, in, in the best of times from when uh, collections are made till we receive them. Uh, but but we ex I expect that that's going to be even more significant. So it, it is going to be a challenge for us to really um, manage uh, uh, and project sales tax throughout the year for a variety of reasons. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Caballero, did you have a question? Yeah, just clarifying. So basically the rainy day fund may already be getting used or seems likely to be used in our current year, which then draws down that 10 million because of current gaps. And then that also then gets kind of snowballs more into next year. Right, I think that was the point uh, the mayor was making with it's 10 million or less. Yeah, or less, okay. Yeah. Is there, do you, and, and this is just, it, you know, you're going from 16.7 down to 12. Is there, do some people do, like, is there, do you have to go from one straight down to the other? I mean, do some people tier it at less percentages? Like, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are there any other questions? Um, I'm looking at the group. I don't see any hands up. Any other, uh, Council Member Freeman on this issue? Yeah. Just one more, um, Council Member Caballero's comment um, brings to mind. Does this, does this um, decrease in rainy day funds have an impact on bond ratings by any chance? Just making I, sure that we're keeping that in mind as well. 
think um, Tom mentioned that in his comments. So that is considered as part of the bond rating. Yeah, I think if that below twelve percent, I would be very concerned. I think uh, my my thoughts uh, from you know all the years we've talked about this and 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 David Boyd's conversation with the rating agencies is that you know when you re, when you use some of that fund balance or we lower an amount. Uh, the bond agencies really want to know what's the plan for building it back uh, as much as the fact that you you used it. And so those are things that we would have to continue to work on uh, to the extent we, uh, we you know, significantly draw down on, uh, on fund balance. And I just make that point just to highlight that it becomes really important how we invest as we're in this downturn in the businesses that are here locally and making sure that they can come back because that is our, our revenue in the future. And so just making that point, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I think that we uh, have, again, on what I would consider a very important issue, uh, reached a consensus. Uh, is everyone good with this, uh, with this budget guideline? Is there anyone not good with the budget guideline? Okay. Um, we'll now go to the new item underneath that. Fund balance may be considered to cover projected revenue losses. Let me ask uh, on this one, uh, Bertha, does this include uh, items that are not one-time funding? Does this mean that we would also consider fund balance to cover recurring uh, expenditures? So, the, the, this is just to state in the past, we've not had to use fund balance to cover revenue losses because we've matched our budget to our revenues. And this is just saying there's a possibility like with sales tax, we would have to fill that gap with sales tax or the other option is you would have to cut on the expenditures. So it's okay. not about the one-time items. Say again. It's not, it's not really about the one-time items. It's just saying that this is a different use of fund balance to cover a revenue shortfall where we may want to make that decision versus cutting on the expenditure side. Right. And, and Mr. Mayor, this is the point I was making that, you know, some, some of the decisions around using one-time revenues for reoccurring expenses are, to what extent do you believe that those revenue losses are permanent or to what extent do you believe those revenue losses you know, would be restored in yeah. either later in the year or in, in future uh, fiscal years? And there's lots of, you know, lots of debate about that, but you know, I, 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 on its surface, you know, uh, based on you know, what we continue to see about the, the economy in, uh, in the Triangle and in Durham and, and you know, the bounce back and all those kinds of things, I stay pretty optimistic about this, even though we acknowledge that uh, there's lots of pain and suffering, both you know, figuratively and practically, along the way, you know, for maybe the next 12 months or so. Uh, but but we we want to be very cautious about this. But I think this is a time that uh, you know that that we you know we may well uh, deviate from our standard practice and and use uh, these one-time revenues to cover reoccurring ex expenses because we think that it's important that those expenditures be made uh, to not have either a service reduction or some other cost reduction, but also because we believe that the, the revenue loss is, is either temporary or one time as well. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, other comments? Um, I've somehow lost your picture by something I did here. Hang on. Um, and, and speak up if you, uh, just because I can't hear, see you, ignore me. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say one quick additional sure. thing. Um, thank you. I think one of the things that uh, the, that we need to keep in mind is when we use uh, fund balance to replace these these types of revenues, is that as the as the city manager said, I think our assumption will be that uh, at some point in the future, whether it's six months, twelve months, eighteen months, whatever it is, that things will get more closer to normal uh, than they are today. But I think we also need to be keeping in mind that it may very well be that this, um, that the prevalence of this virus has 
ends up forcing changes in the way that that we do business um, around the world, uh, including right here in Durham. And I think whether that's uh, changing in the nature of restaurants and how seating and service is handled, whether it's um, you know the does the movie business uh, going to movie theaters, does that actually come back in a form that is recognizable to where it was two months ago? Lots of things could change. And I think as we kind of move into the, I guess, post-COVID world or the, the fully COVID world, I guess I should say, I think we need to be aware that we won't always, we, there will come a point where we have to change how we structure the budget, change how we raise revenue, um, such that we can't just keep going to the to the um, fund balance to accommodate that. So I think you know for this for this time, this is exactly the right decision to make. But I think in the long term, we obviously need to keep our eye on how our economic base is changing uh, with the new reality that I, that I think is going to be forced upon us uh, in the years to come. And obviously, that will have implications in a lot of ways. But I think right here, it's that we can't that you know, using fund balance while we're trying to figure all that out is a really good idea, but beyond that, it's not. So, thanks. Thank you, council member. Uh, anyone else like to make comments on this? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think we're in agreement. Um, and these are important decisions and I really appreciate everybody's thoughtfulness. Uh, the next one is the tax rate for the dedicated housing fund will remain at 2.0 cents. So uh, this would be, we had previously decided that we would uh, raise the taxes per the voters, uh, the, what the voters did on the uh, bond referendum. Uh, and the administration is here recommending that we not have this tax increase this year. Um, and um, let me just ask a couple of questions about this. Um, we have uh, the, the, I'm reading the presentation, we still have the, the only decline in the, uh, the dedicated housing fund projected is the, the, the relatively small decline in property tax collection uh, rate. Is that right, Bertha? That's correct. Um, Minister, I want to remind you, we'll, we'll be showing the other funds. Yeah. That we get through this, so you might see that a little bit clearer too. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, I saw that when I when I read the presentation, and the um, the the negotiations with Fallon are ongoing for the sale of the. Five uh, for the police headquarters. Yes, but that revenue is in the general fund. Okay. Um, so we had discussed using that revenue for affordable housing. Uh, what's this? What is our thinking on that? Uh, well, at this point, you know, the, as we talked about at the budget retreat. Uh, you know, those decisions are, are to be made, but I believe right now the revenue projections, and Bertha, you can correct me if I'm wrong, for the current year anticipate receipt of those funds uh, in the general fund? That's correct. Okay. So that current projection that you gave us, Bertha, that's where they are now? That's correct, in the current fiscal year. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, we've heard from Council Member Caballero on this one. Other folks? Mr. Mayor? Council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think uh, Council Caballero is dead on on this. I, I, some may remember that I argued, uh, I debated rather vigorously for uh, this increase in anticipation of the uh, debt servicing of the affordable housing uh, money we would raise. Uh, I thought that since voters had uh, overwhelmingly uh, uh, agreed to take on this debt, it'd be a good idea from a financial uh, prudence point of view to get the money early and start collecting uh, interest on it uh, in anticipation of the debt that we knew was coming. But in light of these overwhelming 
an extraordinary circumstance that we find ourselves in. I think this is a most appropriate um, uh, recommendation on the part uh, of our of our staff, and uh, and I support it fully. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reese. I agree. Everybody else? Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted Mayor to town. thank you. Add that. Um, we're, we're in this difficult position where at the same time as our, our revenues are going down and our community's overall capacity to pay taxes is going down, the need in the community is going up, particularly with regard to um, you know, housing and food and all these other basic needs. And so um, th these are gonna be really difficult decisions, right? These programs are things that help our most vulnerable residents be able to you know, afford housing and continue to live in the city. At the same time, we're you know dealing with the impact of increased taxation on those same people and on the city overall. So, um, given that we don't need this increase to um, put into place our first year of our housing plan, uh, I think, and and that this year is you know not a good year for a tax increase. I think this is the right way forward. Um, but I you know continue to have in my mind that we're going to have to figure out some really difficult questions around, you know, meeting the increased needs in the community that are that are coming up as a result of COVID with the limited resources that we have and those resources becoming even more limited as a result of COVID. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tricky place. Okay. Uh, any more comments, Council Member Freeman? Thank you. I appreciate uh, Mayor Pro Tem's comments. And uh, I just wanted to note that there is also, which is why I was arguing vehemently against uh, increasing the uh, tax in, uh, in our last meeting regarding the budget. Um, there are a lot of folks who were experiencing COVID related um, financial situations prior to this, and they're disproportionately people of color. And I just wanna be mindful at all times that yes, where, where COVID has created some financial hardships for some, some are still experiencing that on top of the financial hardships they were already facing. And so just being mindful that the, the way in which we do invest, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep hitting on that point is that in that it's not just the businesses, but it's the people and being able to stay in their homes. Um, these things matter and creating uh, the safety net that we know that the federal government's not gonna create for some folks who wouldn't qualify for services is really important. And so I, I, I wanna say again that it's, um, I'm very grateful that the uh, staff has already put in the recommendation, the $5 million for COVID related um, expenses that might arise because we know that they are out there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I will also agree with this. I think it's, it's the necessary and right step. Um, I think that in terms of the uh, emergency, we have uh, an affordable housing fund. We have a dedicated fund. And we have to make some choices uh, about that funds, about those funds. We're, we're, we still have housing funds. And uh, we will get um, some more CDBG money from the government. Um, I'm not sure that we know how much exactly. Maybe we do. Um, but we will be having to face important uh, community concerns. We have our dedicated housing fund to think about that from if they're housing related. And we also have potentially uh, this COVID reserve, which I'm in complete agreement with that we don't want to commit now because we want to see what the needs are. So uh, I think we have unanimity on this as well. Uh, any more comments on this one? I'm just trying to look through the whole screen here. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll now move to a reduction in the tax rate for the downtown business improvement district will be considered. We haven't seen that chart yet. Um, do we wanna wait until we see that chart to discuss this one? Bertha? It's up to you all, I can, I can go. Uh, I think let's do that. Let's hold on that one until we look, we haven't seen that chart yet. Okay, uh, the next is the uh, proposed water and sewer rate increases will not exceed an average of 3%. It was 
it was it was let me see it did you, what is it what am, and what am i saying here birth I, I can't tell where the is there a line drawn through the four percent it it is it it's hard to see on the screen i'm not sure why but it's it's a line through the four percent here yeah three percent is what we're showing now okay the not exceed three percent an average yeah. of okay so let me just say that I know there are concerns about our uh, our ability to make sure we're able to fund our all the water and sewer infrastructure that we need, um, and that we are able to do everything that we're supposed to do within our water and sewer needs. Does this? Um, adequately addressed that at 3%. Yes, Mr. Mayor, this, this can handle the capital program. Um, it is an area that uh, we aren't going to be doing as much as we had hoped in the, in the water system. We staff spent a lot of time talking about, you know, all these things wanting to avoid any increase in any charges that we possibly could. But it was one area that uh, we felt like uh, we we needed to continue this, and it is fairly modest when you look at absolute dollars as to what this uh, this three percent would entail. So that one, we you know we could continue the the capital plan, but also avoid uh, as a result of our financial model a significant increase in in future years. Uh, also, I think that uh, we we have a lot of uncertainties around the the water and sewer fund to the extent that. Uh, uh, there are, we've seen a significant increase in the, uh, the, um, or not, not, not delinquent bills because they're not <laughs> legally delinquent, but uh, a significant uh, increase in the percentage of people who aren't paying their water bill. And as we move into uh, uh, recovery at some point in the future, uh, when the executive order might be amended and we start talking about uh, uh, revenue recovery, uh, this is another area that I think we're, we have a lot of concerns about how that might play out, what our bad debt expenses would be, those kinds of things. And so uh, we, we need to keep this fund solid. And again, the well, 3% is 3%. The dollar amount, uh, absolute dollar amounts on these bills is, is a, a fairly small monthly amount per, per, per household. Thank you. And we are, I know that we have a lot of people, as you said, uh, Mr. Manager, who uh, have not uh, paid their bills uh, and I assume would have had their water shut off uh, under different circumstances. So I assume the possibility here is that we're gonna have to consider as part of our water plan, uh, I believe you said uh, the bad debt write-off, you know, debt relief, I'm not sure uh, exactly how this will all play out, but. Um, I'm assuming that also is going to be a factor uh, moving forward with this fund. Those are issues that we know we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Um, comments about the proposed water and sewer rate increases. Uh, anyone have any comments or questions? Councilmember Caballero. Yeah, just are we prohibited from doing voluntary, you know how Duke has their share the warmth fund, you know, as we were thinking of folks who are are facing, obviously we're going to do the best we can as a city with with over overpaid, I'm sorry, delinquent bills. Is are we prohibited from doing something like that legally? I know we have a lot more restrictions, but I'm just thinking if folks can contribute more from their own just individual Durham residents to a communal fund. Is that an option for us? I'm not certain about that. I could follow up. I know we do make a contribution to social services for emergency support every year for, for utility bills. Okay. I don't know if we have a, a, a roundup kind of program or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Be good to hear back on that. Uh, other other questions or comments on the 3%, um, the recommendation to cut the rate increase from water and sewer from a recommended 4% to 3%. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I don't hear any more. And so Bertha, I'm going to say that we have consensus on that as well. 
Um, our next is a new item as we move through the budget development process and fiscal year pay adjustments for all full time and for full time and part time employees will be considered. So um, we um, had previously um, we had previously outlined very specifically, as we always do in our budget guidelines, what the what the average pay increase is were going to be. But uh, under the un uncertain conditions that we're in, the administration has recommended that we will have to look at adjustments to what we had previously recommended. Um, I'll, so I'll open up uh, for any comments that you may have. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Councilmember Middleton. Thank you, sir. Uh, to be clear, um, when we say pay adjustments will be considered, we're, we're talking about how much upward, right? Or, 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 or are they asking for, is a staff asking for purview also to go downward cuts? You're, you're correct, correct. Councilmember Middleton. Up, okay. Be the, yeah, the performance increases. Got you, got you. Just want to be clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Any other comments or questions about this? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would just say, obviously we have a lot of work to do in this area. Uh, employees, you know, very interested in this as you might expect. Uh, we, you know, have evaluated a few, a few options uh, and we will definitely be coming back with some, some recommendations, obviously, as we work to balance the budget. Uh, but this area will be a, uh, a significant uh, challenge for us to work through and communicate to employees. Yes, it will. Thank you very much. I think we all regret this. And this is just, we talked about the fact that we, there are so many new initiatives that we can't do, that we were hoping to do. Um, and here we're in a situation where we value our employees so much. We've been able to do a good job of raising their pay and increasing their benefits over the last number of years that I've been on council and we um, we're we hate to be in this position where we may have to be able to where we may have to reduce the raises that people are given but it is the reality we're in and uh, we know that the administration will come to us with a, a balanced package that will include all the various factors that we but thank you, and I think we have consensus that this is an unhappy necessity. Next, supplemental retirement, a reduction of this 5% city contribution may be considered. <clears throat> Any particular comments on that? I think we're that's sort of the same, the same boat as the last item. All right. Uh, then the dedicated street resurfacing funding. Uh, will remain at $6 million for FY 2021. And then we have taken out uh, the additional 4 million from fund balance, which we did last year and which was recommended again for this year. Any comments on that? Mr. Mayor, I would say first, this isn't, you know, this is another one of those that if we think back to the resident satisfaction survey, uh, highest priority back then for our residents, I suspect that may change, have changed if we did the survey today. Uh, but it is something that, uh, uh, you know, we, we still have roads, uh, maybe they're being driven less on for the last 30 days, but uh, that, that's not going to stay that way forever. The, uh, the you know, the, the consultant uh, and the previous work even suggested we should be spending as much as $20 million a year on street resurfacing. Uh, so this, you know, in, in doing this during these very challenging times, uh, it would be an acknowledgement that we are willing to, uh, as, a, as a community, in a sense, uh, have a uh, lo lower the standard for which, uh, you know, our roads will, you know, the, the, the uh, not, not necessarily function, but I mean, the, the conditions of our roads will definitely deteriorate and will continue in future years. You can just, the, the, you know, if you remember the model, the longer you wait to do certain things, it's an exponential, you know, cost in the future uh, for waiting. But again, this is another one of those extraordinary situations that, you know, we prefer not to do, but I think realistically, uh, it may be a place where we are. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any comments? 
All righty. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, uh, Council Member Reese. I just wanted to say, I know this is especially painful for those of us who have been um, involved in working with residents to try to address a lot of these kinds of problems. I, I spent a ton of time, or at least I did until about seven weeks ago, um, uh, being told about uh, road repair needs, going out looking at them, um, and referring those to staff. And I, I this is tough. Uh, I know we're all going to be mindful of what the city manager just described about the need to stay on top of this as much as possible, but I absolutely agree that right now um, it's time to focus on the the essential uh, services that we need to provide, um, and so I support this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much, council member. I also support this measure. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? I think we're all in agreement. Oh, council member Freeman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to add, um, I agree and Council Member Reese's comments specifically uh, highlight all of the areas of how hard this is and noting that there've been so many conversations and I'm hopeful that the funding that would be necessary just to do road repairs would be able to cover some of those um, failures that folks seem to report through Derm One call. And so I'll just continue to have those conversations with folks to make sure that they're doing sure that that's reported so that we can keep track of what's happening and where failures have occurred as opposed to just, you know, focusing on the repaving. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on this one? Okay, uh, again, Bertha, thank you. I believe you have uh, our consensus agreement. Uh, funding for the maintenance replacement project plan will remain at $1 million. Uh, we usually have been, the last few years, we've been uh, increasing that at $100,000 per year. The recommendation is that we don't do that this year. Any objection? Everybody good with it? Okay, I see some thumbs, thank you. Um, next is new funding priority will be given to those requests that support the strategic plan. Um, new funding priority is out of this. We are not doing new funding, essentially. Uh, and I just want everybody to be very clear about that. Uh, this is very painful. Uh, there's so many things that we would like to do. And I think that what Council Member Reese said uh, early in the meeting is very important. We are going to be hearing from lots of people, mainly our friends, uh, who want lots of different kinds of spending. Uh, that are not COVID related, but are things that we want to do. Uh, we're gonna have to say no to a lot of people when it comes down to the end of this budget. And it is a sad reality that we face. Um, any any comments about this? Any, any uh, Anyone have any comments or any concerns that they would like to raise at this time? For some reason, okay, yeah, now I'm seeing everybody. Okay, anybody? Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll now move to Funds will be held in reserve up to $5 million for future COVID-19 response. Um, I have one question about that, um, which is when it says up to $5 million, does that mean that when you present your budget, you might present us an amount that's less than $5 million? Or does that mean that, yeah, so what does the up to mean? Yeah, that that's what that means, Mr. Mayor. Um, it, 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 you know, I don't think it, we were, th I was thinking more What's the maximum amount that we were we were targeting? You know, we will we will shoot for that, but obviously as we go through the budget and look for you know where where the you know the balancing mechanisms are, it, it may be something less than that. But but that that would be my goal uh, that I would hope we could we could we could get to uh, without other ramifications because I think there is potential uh, from a variety of fronts that uh, that that will be be needed. In some cases, uh, you know, there there may be um, ongoing expenses that we need to figure out a way to pay for, but I think there's also a lot of uh, uh, there there will potentially be a lot of one-time expenses as well. It's just something I think it's prudent that we we keep in our keep in the forefront again for those uh, those things that, quite frankly, as we say here today, we just don't know. Yeah, and so that includes, as I understood you. Uh, two categories of things. One is things that might occur from city operation side, but also community needs. So for example, would this include 
um, potential assistance to small businesses. Correct. Uh, okay. All right, uh, council members, uh, questions, comments? Um, I see a thumb up from Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, any uh, thumb up from, I see some thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, I wanna just say, I appreciate this initiative, uh, Mr. Manager and Bertha. Um, th this is, uh, I think, really smart. And uh, I'm appreciating that you have taken the initiative to, to get this, to get this as part of our upcoming budget. I think it's really important, so thank you. And then the last mm -hmm. item we have on this is programs may be considered for downsizing or discontinuation. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, can I just say one thing about the COVID Of course you can, fund? yes, absolutely. Um, just wanted to add that I hope we can get as close to 5 million as possible. This would be, like this fund would be a priority for me over some other um, items in the budget, just given, you know, the crisis that we're in, $5 million is, um, it's a lot of money, it's still not going to come anywhere close to meeting the need. Um, but if we could get, if, if we could get $5 million out into the community, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. Any other, any other, anything else on that? Okay. Now we'll move to programs may be considered for downsizing or discontinuation. Uh, any comments on that? Uh, Councilmember Caballero. Yeah, just at some point there will be a potential list of what y'all are thinking, so that we. Certainly, uh, okay. and I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that you know there anything specific uh, at this point, but I, I do feel like there all always should be the reality that when we are trying to address a budget gap of this magnitude, that you know, as we make some evaluations, uh, it may be. That uh, you know, we we've always we always try to avoid the uh, the you know the situations where we say okay, it's a flat across the board. Everybody cuts their budget ten percent. We know that doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. Uh, but also, I think that for for several things, both the financial realities, but also potentially the um, the health realities of some things that we have traditionally done, we may want to downsize or discontinue for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, we know that that sometimes impacts employees, sometimes impacts, it certainly impacts, you know, things that the re that residents like. But I also think that I, I felt it was important that we put this in the guideline as, as a potential reality, that there may be some things for either financial or health reasons, uh, or employee health reasons that we will come back and recommend be discontinued if uh, you know and i would say more likely in the in the in the temporary basis which could mean a year or two but uh, then we would just see see how that goes but I, I just felt like it was important that we we not at least not put that out there as a potential thank you uh, council member reese i just want to thank staff for giving us this reminder of what i think should always be a budget guideline, um, but especially during this time where we're trying to refocus uh, on the truly essential needs in our community uh, during a time when we're going to have when we have a budget gap to try to address. Um, it's nice to have this reminder that um, that this is what difficult choices will often look like. Uh, so I appreciate the staff putting that in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Uh, mm -hmm. Councilmember Middleton. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. And, uh, I also want to just um, thank the staff. I, this last line, so it's almost like the, the beginning is the end. I, I, I see this basically as just a recasting of however funding needs related to COVID-19 may take precedence. Um, same spirit, I think it captures the same sentiment uh, as that first red line uh, in the guidelines. Um, I think we as a city are going to have to make the same choices that families and households are making uh, at the micro level. And as far as the city's one big family, one big house, we're gonna have to look at our family budget and make some decisions. You know, when times are tight, you may not get to take that vacation or, or buy that second vehicle. Uh, and that's where we are as a city. So I think this is wholly appropriate, uh, this line. And, and, and I, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for, uh, for all of us, but uh, no tougher than it is for families that are making these types of decisions, thousands of them 
uh, all around our all around our city right now at this very moment. So I thank the staff. Thank you, Councilmember Caballero. Ah, sorry, I was having issues with my mute button. Apologies. Just and also it, it and I trust the staff to make these kinds of decisions. Um, thinking about the five million, you know, at, at least temporarily, if things have to be dis discontinued programmatically, because it helps us reach that higher amount for relief, I think that that's absolutely the right call. That's Thank you. What we were thinking. Thank you. All right. Any more? Any more comments on this one? Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, Tom and Bertha, other than the bid um, guideline, we've now gone through all the guidelines and we've given all of the guidelines a thumbs up. Um, do you all have anything on, on that just before we move on, that anything else that you feel you need from us or do you feel you've got the discussion and the, um, and the, and the judgments that you needed? I believe we do. Um, Mayor, I also want to thank you all because this is the first time that we've uh, gone through the guidelines in such a transparent way. Um, at a televised meeting, our employees are listening, our residents are listening, and so it sends the message, the same message to everyone, as well as, uh, you know, it promotes transparency, and so I appreciate that. Thank you. I agree. Thank you for saying that, Bertha. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bertha. Um, colleagues, I just want to recap. I mean, what we are saying here to our community is that uh, we will be considering, and we, will, we know we will have to have some programs that are discontinued or downsized. That's a reality we're gonna face. Uh, we, are, we are not going to be paving the number of roads that we usually pave. Uh, our maintenance funds for our replacement project plans are going to be less than they previously were. We're not going to be uh, increasing taxes for, the, um, for any purpose. Um, our employees uh, who I know are listening and who are so valued uh, may not get the raises that they are almost, I would say, unlikely to get the a level of raises that had been previously planned. So we are in an, a time of budget austerity because that is the reality we are in. Uh, I can just say, I cannot think of a team of people that I am more confident in than um, our budget team that Bertha Johnson leads, uh, our finance team, uh, our, uh, all of our city management, the ability to make the adjustments that we need to make, and our city manager uh, who uh, has already guided our city uh, through a very, very difficult budget time 10 or 11 years ago, Tom. Uh, and we're so fortunate to have you all to be leading this process and are very, very uh, so confident in your ability to do this well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Um, I think now we should move to uh, the uh, rest of the presentation on the um, other funds. We will come back to the bid. Uh, once we hit the bid uh, discussion, we'll come back to that guideline. Thank you. So the next fund we wanna talk about is the transit fund. Um, we expect the fund to be able to operate within the 3.75 uh, cents. The, although the fund is losing some revenue with property tax based on the adjustment of the collection rate, 134,000, there is uh, $12.2 million that's been appropriated to this area by the CARES Act. And I believe on May 8th, the MPO will vote on the split of those uh, resources. And so there, there is an opportunity for additional resources for uh, the transit fund. Um, the fund uh, does not have fund balance. And so if the funding was not available through the CARES Act, we would have to look at how we would um, provide some additional resources to this fund. And so until that point, we really don't know the exact number until we see what that apportionment is. Thank you very much. Are there questions uh, at this point uh, or are any, anyone want to uh, discuss the transit fund? I'm trying to see if there are any hands up. I don't see any. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so looking forward to hearing what the transit fund uh, operating uh, uh, support is from the CARES Act. That'll be super important. And we'll look forward to hearing back from you on that. I am 
uh, going to be at that May 8th meeting as I'm the alternate on the um, MPO and I'll be stepping up uh, to be at that meeting uh, because uh, of course, Renetta will no longer be there, but Charlie and I will be there uh, okay. as part of that. Thank you. Charlie. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just on transit real quick. Um, uh, we don't know what the amount of a CARES Act money is going to be that flows into the transit fund. So it's hard to know. And also, we don't think we've done uh, enough work right now to know how um, how the new um, how the new reality that we face on the ground in Durham will affect uh, transit long term. I think what I take away from what I've seen about current ridership is that unlike many other cities, both in North Carolina and around the country, there is still very significant need uh, for our transit services here in Durham. Um, and uh, I think that is uh, something that we all need to understand is an absolutely essential service for the city. Uh, but obviously it's much more expensive to run that service under the current conditions. Um, not least of which because we're foregoing the revenue from the fare box right now. Uh, in order to protect our operators and our ridership uh, from the kind of close personal contact that collecting fares can often uh, create. And uh, now we have moved to limiting seating in our buses to 16 riders per bus. Uh, um, obviously, that increases the need for more frequency, which our administration has, uh, as we heard about um, at yesterday's work session, we're looking at ways to try to address uh, that problem, because obviously, um, you know, we've all heard from folks over the last uh, three or four days who have uh, found who have been in difficult situations with buses passing by stops, uh, ha having reached their allotted number of riders. And so I think all of that is to say that um, that this is going to be an area that we need to be very focused on as a council uh, in terms of how we work to make sure that our transit system continues to operate. Uh, for the riders who desperately need it. And uh, I just want to say that this is going to be one of those really big priorities for me. Um, I think the budget will be what it's going to be. But as we go into the next fiscal year, as we look at what adjustments we have to make in terms of when the revenue forecasts be, are, are adjusted, uh, this is an area that I will continue to be very, very focused on and uh, just appreciate everyone's attention to this as we get into it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other comments on transit? All right, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and move to our next fund. The solid waste fund um, is projected to operate uh, within the tax allocation of 5.59 cents. Um, there is a $201,000 loss with the adjustment of the property tax. Um, this fund is healthy. They have $6 million in fund balance. So although there may be some revenue losses, um, we feel confident that this fund, this fund can um, be just fine uh, next year with this additional fund balance if needed. Thank you. And you know, what I'm seeing here in that fund and some of these others is that while we're taking a hit on the sales tax, on the property tax side, those funds that rely primarily on property tax are not near, taking nearly the hit as the, our general fund, which has the big sales tax component. That is correct. That's yeah. correct. And if you, you know, we, we talked yesterday quite a bit at the work session about the uh, the increased uh, recycling costs, uh, and those are factored into uh, into these budget projections already as well. Thank you. Anything else on solid waste at this time? All right, let's move to the next one. So we don't have any updated um, projections for the parking uh, fund at this time. We uh, know that revenue projections will be impacted. Um, there is no property tax um, in this fund, so um, the fund doesn't um, will not have any revenue loss from the change in the property tax. We are still working on the projections for this fund, and we'll come back uh, at a, at a late, later date. But I do want to point out that the fund balance is 8.3 million in the fund, and just like the general fund, when there is fund balance and there's a loss of revenue, we do have a way to to uh, cover that gap. Thank you. I just want to point out as I see these individual fund balances um, for the various funds that 
this is very wise management on behalf, behalf of our city management. So again, Tom, Bertha, all of you all who are responsible for this very wise management of our city, we're now seeing at this time of emergency and austerity that you all have done a lot of wise planning. And so I wanna appreciate that. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanna point out that David Board and his team in finance, they work closely with the enterprise departments on their financials. And so I wanna um, give some kudos to them for the work they've been doing with these departments. Shout out to David, thank you. So the bid, um, the scenarios we have here um, is the bid expected um, revenue at seven cents, six, five, and 5.73. 5.73 was is the revenue neutral number that we shared with you last year after the reval. We, um, as you look at this fund, you can see the, the you know, the major uh, expense in the fund is the DDI contract. And uh, for the purposes of this uh, presentation, that number remains flat um, at uh, each of the scenarios. We, um, at, if you look at the six cents number, you know, that's pretty, um, that's pretty flat in terms of uh, the surplus or deficit. So in the guidelines, we had that we would consider a reduction, meaning that we would just have the option to look at a reduction in the bid. And we certainly wanted to have this slide here so that we could get some, have some discussion with you all and get some feedback. Could you describe to me, what is the major actual functional difference that would occur were we to reduce the bid tax rate? So the, if you, if we reduce to six cents, um, we would hold, and others can jump in, we would hold the, um, the contract um, at the same rate. If we dropped it to five cents and tried to hold the contract at the full amount, you see we have a deficit. So the only funding source for this fund is the bid uh, tax, as well as the revenue that the general fund puts in the 250,000, which we had talked about a possibility if we needed that funding elsewhere. So at five cents, we would either have to reduce the DDI contract um, if we wanted to maintain the contract at the 1.2 million, we would have to find an additional 152,000. Um, at, at the, and you see the scenario at the 5.73 cents. So at this point, the break even is obviously at the six cents where you wouldn't have to reduce the contract. The uh, DDI submits a budget request through um, OEWD every year. Um, and so they have, they are working on um, looking at where they have some savings from the current fiscal year, from some of the activities that didn't happen in the spring, that they could carry forward some of that funding the next fiscal year. And therefore we could have some savings with their contract. It's just um, information at this time, but it relates to the guideline in terms of us having the option to reduce the rate. But Mr. Mayor, Thank if I could ju jump into th this is one that uh, you know we we have spent some time thinking about, uh, but not as much as we have the, the general fund, um, and you know we we kind of try to balance the you know the what what we hear about uh, the you know the downtown business owners and the restaurants and different places that are financially struggling and uh, and to what opportunity there is to uh, reduce their their tax burden. Uh, but at the same time, um, thinking about if we kept the tax rate the same, uh, not suggesting that all of the services that uh, that DDI previously had or, or had been you know had been funded for, how we might think differently about the needs for uh, some additional revenue for some support for the actual businesses, not necessarily the property owners uh, in in the downtown area. We don't really have a I don't have a plan in place or in mind specifically right now, but I think it is the trade-off of, uh, of, you know, on the one hand, the, you know, the, the taxes uh, trickle down to, uh, to tenants and businesses and in, in, in those fashions. Um, and so I might think about that, but also think about, are there some programmatic aspects that we uh, might want to think about uh, using that full seven cents or some, you know, by, by going to keeping it at the seven cent tax rate uh, to support uh, downtown businesses. The flip side of that, of course, is that uh, 
Uh, I think then we'll quickly hear about why are we doing something for downtown? Are we prepared to do that throughout the entire community? Uh, and a lot of the folks, you know, that we, we typically would, you know, we, we would normally hear from not typically associated with, you know, priorities for downtown versus priorities for businesses in other neighborhoods. So those are, that's a swirl of things that go through my mind when I'm not sleeping well at night about what we do about downtown and the, and the business district, you know, the, the, the bid district. Uh, but I thought I wanted to put this in front of you, not with specific recommendations, but just to hear kind of some of the council's thoughts about you, what you're thinking about tax rates and, uh, you know, interest in, in potentially lowering tax rates for, you know, for the downtown area uh, versus uh, how we might think about prioritizing uh, uh, some, you know, regular revenue stream for, for other purposes as it relates to downtown businesses, which I'm sure you have already heard a lot, of, a lot from and a lot about. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, do we have comments uh, or questions by members of the council? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Mayor Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Tom, for that. And thank you uh, again to the staff and for sharing uh, this, this slide. And, and um, this is something I've really, really thought long and hard about uh, coming in uh, to this discussion. Uh, full disclosure, I, I, I put, well, the, the council obviously knows, but for those watching, I sit on the board of directors for the bid uh, as the council's rep. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty conversant on um, some of the inner workings of, uh, of the bid. And firstly, I, I, I want to say something about tax rates in general, philosophically. And, and, I, and I, for the sake of uniformity, none of the other rates we're proposing lowering, we're holding them static. We're, we're just holding them where they are. And I, I think in terms of lowering rates, um, we know that this is a temporary um, situation we're dealing with COVID-19. At some point, we're going to be on the other side. And whatever we lower, if we lower it more than 1%, say to five, you know, governments uh, generally don't restore you fully to where you are. It's, it's usually incremental. So if, if we were to go from the 7% uh, percent downward, I'm concerned that when this is over, um, down the road, um, how, how willing we would be, or we would, we would we even have the bandwidth or wherewithal to get back to the, to the rate pre COVID rate when all other rates from a taxation point of view are, are being held from the dedicated housing fund, nobody else's rates being cut. Now I say this because the, the, the downtown folk, at least when I think about the folk I deal with, uh, with DDI, we're not talking about multi-billion dollar conglomerates in RTP. Um, we're talking about BU Cafe uh, are one of their constituents. We're talking about Empower Dance Studio. Uh, Mechanics and Farmers still has an office on Parish Street um, uh, here uh, downtown. So, so uh, one of the things that I know DDI also is working on programmatically uh, is being the tip. When we talk about the lack of minority involvement downtown, DDI is one of the main organizations and interests we're looking to to help us fix that. So programmatically, um, some of the things they're involved in are precisely trying to increase the amount of uh, minority and, and wisdom, uh, w women uh, representation in the downtown corridor. We're not talking about big out-of-town developers. We're talking about business owners who, who we know and many of us uh, patronize. So, and I know that there is a willingness to, as Tom alluded to, uh, find a way perhaps from a, from a, from a, a, a budgetary uh, way to, to redirect funds uh, to deal with some of the issues we may want to deal with under the COVID heading without um, moving the, the, uh, the rate. So, so from a uniformity point of view, in terms of how we're treating all other tax rates, uh, I'm leaning, I'm, I'm really amenable towards leaving it at the seven cents, but we definitely need to have some conversations with the bid about if we don't lower the rate, definitely redirecting some of the funding, the actual hard budget choices of what they're doing with that money uh, to perhaps uh, rather than land owners helping uh, tenants and, and actual business owners downtown. Um, because, you know, when we get on the other side of this, um, when we're looking for those engines that give us the money to, to help people and, and to do things, um, a lot of that's going to be driven, um, you know, for better, for worse. Uh, by downtown, but I, I do want to demystify some of when we say downtown that we're talking about some folk who are neighbors who are small business owners or mid-sized business owners that many of us love and 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 support on a regular basis uh, in Durham, and so I would be amenable to keeping um, 
the rate at seven cents, but working on uh, specific budgetary decisions. Uh, and I think Tom alluded to the possibility of redirecting funds uh, in ways that, that meet our goal of addressing COVID related uh, exigencies. Uh, so that's what's just my initial salvo uh, when I'm thinking. I, I'm, I'm interested, of course, to hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Council Member. Council Member Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Have we heard from um, from DDI about kind of what what their thinking is right now? I know we may have received a budget request from them prior to um, March, but what kind of what are what are we hearing from them about about th this particular question? I think Bertha has been in contact some with uh, the DDI folks, but I have not seen any proposals yet. Uh, Bertha, do you have any, have you received any information yet? I, I have received some information. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Nicole Thompson and I have talked several times and obviously, you know, it, it's her preference to retain it at seven cents, but she's also working on scenarios um, where she may be able to capture savings from the current fiscal year if we allow her to re retain those savings that we could reduce the contract next year. Again, obviously she wants to retain it at seven cents. Uh, we do know that it is a challenge sometimes when you reduce rates to bring those back. And so I, I definitely acknowledge that. Um, but she understands that we may not be reducing the uh, tax rate for the general fund and other funds, but we certainly may be making some reductions within those funds and with some of our uh, programs and services. And so I see that sort of as, uh, akin to this, you know, it's, it's a program within the bid. So we have had several conversations and she has sent me some scenarios. I don't have those in front of me, uh, but I would want to uh, say that she did say she, you know, obviously would prefer to keep the, the bid at seven cents, but that's a decision that we wanted to bring this forward as Tom said to you all, just to give us feedback. I mean, no decision has been made and Tom has not received uh, the budget yet, nor has he received the additional information she sent to me earlier this week. Thank you, Bertha. Um, let's see, anyone else with a question at this point or a comment on the bid tax rate? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just wanted to comment that the $250,000 transfer from the general fund, um, if we, if we kept the bid at seven cents, would be, we would be able to remove the majority of that and still have the fund be, um, have like not have a deficit. So that's an option that we could consider as well. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this one? Mr. Mayor? Uh, Councilor Mayor Middleton? Yes, thank you. And I, I, I think I, I should respond directly to um, Councilor Reese's query and, and, and just disclose that I have, as a member of the board, had conversations with um, CEO Nicole Thompson. And I can say most assuredly that one, she is in support of the maintaining it at 7%. And she definitely is willing um, managerially and, and as the CEO to work to find savings and, and to redirect funds within the, under the uh, umbrella of that 7% uh, to address COVID related uh, matters. So, so there's definitely a willingness uh, from her part. I mean, she made that representation to me. So I think I should go on record saying that since the counselor Reese asked it directly. And sorry if I didn't make that clear. Uh, at the uh, outset of my statement. Thank you. All right, uh, Council Member Caballero. Yeah, um, I mean, just thinking about, you know, the my concern are, are for the small business owners and just because their landlords get a rent or, you know, lower tax rate does not mean that that savings is gonna be passed on in the rent paid to those landlords by the small business owners. Uh, whereas if we keep the, the rate at seven cents and there's a little bit more give in the budget, then we can potentially provide more assistance to the actual business owners um, versus just a, a tax decrease. Um, so that's kind of my thinking. Thank you very much, council member. Uh, do we have any more, do we have any more comments? Council member Freeman. I'll just restate. I mentioned earlier that it was concerning that we would be giving a tax cut um, in an area that folks have already raised issues around it, always receiving the attention of the city. And um, I would uh, I would think that um, 
if we're not considering one in general, that it's a hard um, position to be in to make one for downtown. And so just noting, um, I look forward to hearing more about why it would be necessary. If there is something I'm missing, I would love to hear something specific, but um, I don't understand why we're considering a cut. So that's a little concerning, that's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, this one's a little harder to summarize than the other ones, but let me try, uh, Bertha. I think what I'm hearing is that uh, there are some folks that definitely think we ought to keep it at seven. Uh, there's a suggestion that we might consider transfer from the general fund or some reduction of that. Um, I, I, I think that um, there's a, a lot of interest in that if we keep it at seven or whatever we keep it at, that we hear from DDI what the COVID related relief that they might be offering uh, to small businesses, especially our disadvantaged small businesses. Am I Colleagues, do you feel like that's a fair summary? Anybody want to add anything to that? Okay. Um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, sorry, there was something I wanted to add, which is that I believe the majority of the DBI budget is their staff, right? They're the downtown ambassadors and, and folks. So, you know, one of, we're trying very hard to, you know, make sure we keep all of our city staff on board. Um, I would also with, you know, with, with, organizations where a large chunk of funding comes from the city wouldn't want to put them in a position where they have to lay off people unless it's absolutely unavoidable. So when we're asking um, DDI to come back with um, with budget adjustments, given that, you know, we don't, given that keep it, we could keep the bid at seven cents and um, keep their contracts whole and they could keep all their folks on board. Um, just want to communicate to them that, you know, avoiding layoffs is a priority and I would be I would, in general, I support keeping the tax at seven cents, but I think I would be even more, um, you know, leaning in that direction if not keeping it at seven cents meant folks would lose their jobs. Thank you. Bertha, how's that? Is that reasonable guidance? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank and beyond, you. Mr. Mayor, if I can just add one thing. Sure. And I, I, I wanna say, uh, again, and privy to this by being on the board, uh, to DDI's credit, they've already, uh, begun moving our money around uh, to support uh, small businesses and restaurants uh, in the downtown area. I know they were instrumental in in, in Jetta's Tea, uh, getting Jetta's Tea where they are and keeping Zen as well. So um, these aren't things that they're thinking about now that COVID has come about. Some of these things are already, uh, money's already being moved around towards COVID related uh, matters. And I know they, they, they would want that on the record and I just want to put that in the record, but I appreciate the, the sensible uh, and in-depth comments I think my, my colleagues have uh, provided on this matter thus far. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I think we're ready for our next. So um, this slide was, these um, items are here because I didn't know how far we would get if we needed more discussion on the water sewer rates. As the manager mentioned, we continue to think about those. We have a meeting on Monday just to go through the uh, budget requests for uh, the water for water management to uh, ensure that we can get the best rate we can get in terms of um, and what that means for our, for our residents. Um, we don't need any other discussion about stormwater rates or the dedicated housing fund. These were just here because they're they're tough decisions, and if we needed to come back to those, we could. Um, I want to before Ruth, excuse me before we leave the dedicated housing fund. I I think we, you know, I, I would like to get some reaction from council members if you're comfortable that we just kind of move on, uh, move, move forward with kind of the, the strategies that we had put in place, or do you think there is a need for something similar to this discussion that's strictly around the, the housing fund? Uh, I know that, um, uh, you know, where we left off, so to speak, uh, you know, the McDougal Terrace uh, situation uh, was was in a lot of uncertainty. Happy to report that I think the last family is moving to McDougal Terrace this weekend. But we also know there that uh, uh, we uh, the, the the costs associated with that uh, uh, those repairs and that relocation is still uh, still up in the air. 
Uh, I know there's been a lot of interest in um, the, uh, uh, or, or concern, I should say, uh, raised about, you know, what, what coming out of, uh, of COVID will mean with um, evictions uh, and, and any of those kinds of upticks of situations that we'll need to be responding to. And then uh, still a lot of discussion in the community about the uh, um, uh, tax assistance program. And uh, I do want to say that, you know, you know, as of today, just to be clear, the, the staff has not been working on that much. Uh, the county staff also has not been working on that much, obviously, because we've been responding to a whole new set of issues that, that were never even contemplated. So I just want to put that out there uh, because I don't want to have a situation if we haven't talked about it, that when we get to the budget, all of a sudden we, you know, we're at a, you know, what about this? What about that? I mean, we are fortunate to have the, the, the dedicated housing fund or the, the housing, the housing fund in and of itself, which has a, you know, the two cents tax, uh, tax revenue stream and the, and the, um, uh, the federal, the federal funding programs and some other resources. Uh, and it can be just a situation of, of, you know, moving money around or deferring projects for other priorities. But I just wanted to be sure to check back in with you today is to see, do you think there's a need for a separate uh, mini budget discussion around the housing programs? Or are you comfortable that knowing that the money's there and we will continue to respond and kind of figure things out uh, as we go and as, you know, other, um, you know, uncertainties become clear, whether that's to what extent DHA will get uh, federal funds to reimburse them, to what extent there's other costs associated with McDougal Terrace, uh, to what extent there are uh, additional priorities for uh, eviction diversion, some of those kinds of things. I just wanted to put that on the table while we have you here today so that we, you know, we don't get down the road and, and find out that there was a, a either a surprise or something that we missed with your intentions. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I'll, I'll uh, add, respond to that uh, and then happy to hear from colleagues. Um, I think it would be good once you're a little farther down the road with information and knowledge uh, to have a discussion about the dedicated housing fund and also, for example, if there's other CDBG money that's coming specially uh, for these kinds of things, um, I think that that's, that would be good. I, don't, I, I, I would prefer it once you all know a little bit more. Um, maybe we could do it as a work, work session item uh, with a presentation. That's uh, fine. Or of course, if you feel that we need it for a special meeting, we could do that too. But, um, you know, I think one of the things, colleagues, that I heard the manager say, and I just want to say this out loud, is we have been counting on the money from Fallon for uh, the housing fund. It's now going to be uh, out of necessity put into the general fund. Uh, you know, we talk about all the people we're going to be disappointing, and one of the groups of people we're going to be disappointing is people that want to use that money for uh, affordable housing. We are in a time of austerity, and I just want to say that I support that, but um, we, all of us are going to have to be dealing with the many disappointments that uh, people are going to be feeling, uh, and we're just going to have to be honest about our situation, transparent about our situation, and strong in our conviction uh, that um, this is the time for, uh, that, we, that we've got an enormous budget hole to fill, and this is a time for the kinds of austerities and choices that are uh, going to help us maintain our essential city services, keep our employees uh, paid and, and well compensated, um, and uh, able to do uh, the most important things in front of us. Any thoughts, any other thoughts about the dedicated housing fund? Are you all okay with the idea of having a discussion? Um, I got a thumb up from Councilmember Caballero uh, at a later time. I see some more thumbs up. Councilmember Freeman, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. So I'm um, hearing good guidance from looks like everybody, um, Tom and Bertha, that we would like a conversation about that, but that perhaps at a later time when you Great. all have more. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate Tom bringing that up because that we in the past, we have had a separate kind of housing discussion um, prior to budget adoption. So thank you, Tom. Thank you. So, all right, yeah, go ahead, Bertha. I was 
He's going to ask her other questions related to the presentation. Are there any other questions uh, related to the presentation? I have a question. Uh huh. Go ahead, Council Member Middleton. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I thank again Tom and Bertha for for this incredible work uh, you're doing for the city. Um, I, I'm I'm. I'm glad we, we're, we're going to have this five million. Or we're looking to have this five million uh, to address COVID-related needs, whatever they might be. I'm curious, um, and, and I hope this isn't premature. I put you guys on the spot asking. Um, we've seen some media uh, lately about a, about a million dollar fund that our friend in Raleigh. Shout out to them. I know they watch us regularly. Um, a friend in Raleigh have established to help small businesses in Raleigh. I'm wondering, and I I know that um, Raleigh took notes from us on our affordable housing bond. Um, have you guys uh, looked at that at all? Is there anything worth looking at uh, that in terms of moving forward and how we might help businesses uh, in Durham? Is that a model worth looking at in your opinion, uh, Bertha or Tom, if you have looked at it? Um, yeah, I don't know that we know for sure yet uh, because that was more a transfer of funds with a, a you know, the program was not completely defined. Uh, the um, uh, deputy uh, City Manager Chadwell and uh, uh, Pettigrew from OWD have been, have been working with our partners, uh, uh, thinking about what a program might look like for the city. Uh, to look at the uh, federal programs uh, and funding that are coming down, uh, trying to understand what that looks like. There's some potential for state programs. So we know that it is, uh, it is an issue that we want to respond to. I anticipate that uh, you'll be hearing more from us kind of out of the budget cycle about what that might look like. I think we are being very cautious to not fall in the trap of acting quickly uh, for the sake of acting quickly, uh, as I say, scratching an itch uh, and making sure that, uh, that whatever we come forth with really is targeted and not just uh, something that is quickly uh, uh, you know, used up by those that have the, the, the easiest advantage of access. Uh, so it's something that we're, we want to be very intentful about. Uh, certainly, I think it's gonna play into our built to last initiative as well. Uh, probably will we'll look a lot like that, but just with a, a, different, uh, a, different, a little bit different focus. So you'll be hearing back from us soon uh, with, with some ideas about that. But I also wanna say, I. And not uh, at this point, I don't believe we're going to be as, as you know, that, that, that we're in a place to say, let's write a million dollar check so that we can say we did something and move on. We want to be, you know, not saying Raleigh did that, but those, those programs and guidelines have not been developed yet from everything I understand. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. I think we all recognize the importance of assisting our small businesses and we want to do it in a smart way. And I think that uh, Tom and I have talked about this and I've been on some of the conversations uh, with, um, there, uh, uh, gosh, a couple of weeks ago, conversations with uh, self-help and uh, Duke University, as you all know, has established a fund of a million dollars to uh, help small business. And there uh, is in the way that Tom said that they haven't decided uh, that, that we're still trying to decide about what how to set up a program. Duke is still working to figure out what its criteria are. Um, I feel strongly, as Tom indicated, uh, we don't want this to be a first come first serve program like the PPP has become for the federal government. We want to target the disadvantaged businesses that we know are most in need uh, and are, let, are the least likely to be able to access federal funding. Uh, including some businesses uh, that are operated by undocumented people who can't operate the, who can't access the federal funding at all, um, uh, but are and are historically disadvantaged businesses. And so, I just want us to be mindful of that. I know that Duke is very interested in us uh, helping to match their funds, and I definitely support that. Uh, but I support the thoughtful approach that the university is taking, uh, and that. Uh, that Stephanie Williams' office and that our OEWD is taking and the, the um, other folks working on this. So I definitely wanna do it. Um, I'm very much in support of it and I wanna do it our way, um, the way that we do things and do things well. Any other comments or questions on that? Any other, anything else on that? Uh, Councilmember Freeman. 
Thank you. I, I appreciate your comments on that. And I I understand. I know that I mentioned on Monday night, um, pulling together the, some folks around creating a fund specifically um, to address something like this. And so I'm, I'm waiting for them to give me more information. And I know that they're, they're trying to nail down some specifics exactly around what you mentioned, um, just as a small support um, that, or a small piece and, and part of um, trying to support the small businesses in our community. I um, also, I just wanted to track back. I noticed um, we received an email while we were in this um, meeting. And I just wanted to be clear that if there were a decrease in the match for um, 401ks, that that would still come back to us before it was done. I, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear to folks that this, this is not a, we're not saying that we're gonna decrease anything right now, but- um, That's correct. That we're just, just making sure that there's considerations that are available for the city to make adjustments if necessary. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we've done it, Bertha, have we? Uh, yes, and I just wanna uh, thank uh, John and Lauren, his, his team. Um, they have pivoted from uh, working with our departments, developing their budgets to go back and go back through our multi-year plans and develop these presentations. Um, we are so fortunate to be able to telecommute, so we haven't lost any time in terms of the budget process. And so I just wanna thank John and his team for all the work they've done over the last few weeks and continue to do um, getting us ready and trying to weekly uh, listen to what's going on uh, with economists and other folks and trying to you know, adjust accordingly. So I just wanna thank his team and thank you all. I too want to express my appreciation to Bertha and the budget staff, but all the department directors who have just continued to uh, to, to work amazingly under uh, very fluid situations. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, some of these budget discussions are not their highest priority for the day. Uh, but, uh, they have stayed attentive and responsive as we've tried to uh, to work through them. And as I said at the beginning, really the the next couple of weeks are going to be very intense for us to. Uh, have quite a few quite a few meetings to uh, to sort through uh, how uh, we come back uh, in the middle of May with a, a recommended and balanced budget that uh, that is consistent with the uh, the budget guidelines and, and and is something that you know you will be willing to uh, to consider and and propose to the community. Thank you, Tom. Thank I think you. that and and I want to thank uh, add Bertha to your thank you Bertha and add to your thanks to John and Laura and others on your staff. We appreciate you. Um, so I think what I'm hearing, uh, Tom. Let me make sure that we're all on the same page now. <coughs> Pardon me about the timeline. Um, you all will be talking to us in your individual meetings, Tom, and maybe if you meet others in the interim about what you're thinking is along, along the lines as you develop more information. On the, on the housing, we'll have some sort of more, uh, a group presentation, either at a special meeting or at the work session. And then in mid-May, uh, you'll come to us with, with a fully uh, developed budget proposal. Is that, is that what we're thinking? Yes, and I think that we'll, you know, we'll likely have that uh, kind of, pre-budget check-in with the you know, where we are before the budget is presented, but we you know, would be presenting the budget officially at the, uh, the second council meeting uh, in May. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, I, I would just wanna be sure, I, I, I think it was uh, evident and, and, and assumed, but I wanna be sure that there's not misunderstandings and, and uh, we can do some more follow-up. But you know, we, when we last were talking about budget in a different environment, uh, the council was wrestling with a number of new initiatives and new priorities that, that people were proposing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we're acknowledging that those are gonna be held in abeyance for now uh, as a part of this as well, along with the other staff initiated requests. Mr. Manager, I believe that we all are of that understanding. Um, Just want to be sure. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all facing a very, very difficult reality. Uh, this, you know, I mean, I'm, Honestly, I'm heartbroken about so many things in our community right now. So many of these initiatives that I wish we could do, so many ways in which people are just having to undergo such difficult circumstances in their own lives. Um, 
the financial hardship that people are facing. It's just a very tough time. And uh, we, uh, I think uh, Mark Anthony said it well, uh, we are facing the same situation that a lot of our individual households are facing as a community. And we're just gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to step up to that. And, and again, I clearly think that, uh, that you know, this is a budget that uh, uh, we will be paying close attention to and that will evolve well past the adoption date in June. Uh, and that we will, you know, have a lot of continued check-ins, uh, and and you know, if if we are very fortunate and things can rebound, then there'll always be opportunities to come back and revisit some of some of the issues. But for now, again, we are we are where we are. But thank you for your support and cooperation with all of us. Thank you, colleagues. I do want to say, and I uh, that we have out today a new uh, stay-at-home order. Uh, the, uh, the county has amended the stay-at-home order, which we, of course, have adopted in the spirit of our unified stay-at-home order. Uh, it does extend until May the 15th. Um, as you all know, the governor extended to May the 8th. This is a week beyond that. Uh, the governor has continued to make it clear that what they're doing at the state level is the floor, and they're expecting the urban areas to do what we need to do to keep our community safe and the understanding that our restrictions are uh, very, very well might be uh, more stringent than theirs. Uh, so we are continuing our own order through May the 15th. We have done a little more relaxation. Of, we're, we're trying to gradually relax the things that we can and let people get back to, you know, especially employment and so forth. So we've done a couple things. We've relaxed the real estate regulations a little bit. And I want to thank Council Member Reese and uh, Commissioner Reckhout for working with our real estate businesses on that. Thank you, Charlie. Big help. And we're also now allowing curbside uh, delivery or pickup from any uh, retailer. So uh, that uh, uh, Wake County and Orange County have been doing that for a week. Uh, I'm not sure how long Orange has been doing it. Wake's been doing it for a week. Uh, they have felt like it's been successful. So you will now be able to, uh, if, you're a real uh, if you're a retail business, be able to offer curbside pickup, even if you're not deemed essential. Uh, this is under certain, of course, safety constraints, uh, but I'm glad we're able to do this loosening up. And then in the last quarter, we also uh, reestablished the ability of farmers markets to operate under safe circumstances. And uh, I want to thank uh, everybody who worked on that as well. But I did want to let you know that that order will be in effect tonight at five o'clock. Um, any questions about that? Council Member Caballero. Just the, the governor did cancel school through the rest of the year during his announcement this afternoon. Okay, thank you. And then I um, had a quick, quick question that was budget related. Sure. Which is we're supposed to have one, a minimum of one public budget meeting, which we, that was the one we canceled back in March. And so are we thinking, I guess, what are we thinking around that? And then additionally, I just wanted to say thank you to all our staff for your excellent work. Um, I know we're facing some really tough decisions, but again, you you really do set us up to make those hard decisions in a, in a really effective way. So um, the public hearing, we still have a public hearing scheduled for June 1st, which is the required public hearing. The one we had scheduled before was not required. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions for Bertha or Tom? All right, thank you for this special meeting, everybody. Great job. Um, Have a great weekend. Everybody, thank you so much. I'm gonna declare this meeting adjourned at 3.22 p.m. Thank you so much, everybody. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay home, great wear weekend. your masks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Thank Thanks, you, Bertha. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye.